it's the shoulder movement for me. And what song do you hear? Like, <laughs> like you got a whole vibe going on. Anyway, oh, oh, that's not, we, we're recording. <laughs> Welcome to Behind Closed Doors. No, no we ain't Behind Closed Doors yet. Calm down, guys. <laughs> we got to do this right. We all, we all strong and wrong. Listen, I don't know if you guys have been in a relationship for any length of time, but here's what I know to be true. Somebody going to do something at some point that's going to make you have to wrap your mind around forgiving. Coming up next, y'all stay tuned for the next episode of Behind Closed Doors with the Brooks. to the channel guys for those of you guys who are just joining us i am glenn p brooks jr i am a relationship coach i'm an author i'm a speaker and sitting here next to this lovely light-skinned woman who for the last 25 years has been getting on my last nerve i'm sharia brooks jr Jesus. i'm an author speaker and relationship coach and welcome to behind closed doors with the brooks if you have not please subscribe to the channel also share this out to your friends families Co-workers, people you kind of like, you might not like, mm -hmm. just share it out so that they can get some of this goodness. So, Sheree, speaking of goodness, <laughs> um, we're going to talk about the roles of forgiveness in a successful marriage. And I think that we need to kind of really start here. People, and we've seen this in our communities that we coach on a regular basis, they seem to think that marriage it, it should not have its hiccups. It should not have its moments where... It's going to require you to forgive. I recently heard somebody talking about that for them, red flags in a relationship was uh, when they weren't getting along or when they had conflict. And what I know is um, this ain't our first rodeo. And we have had our fair share of trying to embrace this idea of the role of forgiveness. Talk to us. Let's set this up and let's help some people out. So first, when we talk about forgiveness, we have to understand that the act of forgiveness is not about the other person. It's about you being able to let something go um, and you're being able to move beyond whatever that offense is that that person did. It's more about that than the other person, because when we hold on to things that causes issues with us and that's going to get into actually our first point. But. I think when it comes to marriages, people go into marriages with this false idea that it's going to be all rose colored glasses. It's going to be, you know, you guys have gone through the hard part before you get married, but the hard part actually starts after you get married. And as long as you're in a relationship with any person, there are going to be times that you're going to disappoint each other. There are going to be times that, you know, somebody's going to make a bad decision. Somebody's going to make a poor choice or somebody's going to do something to upset you or hurt your feelings. Um, that's human nature. And we have to be willing, um, particularly in marriage, to forgive um, the missteps of our spouse, um, be able to forgive our children when they make, you know, their their choices. I won't even say bad choices, but they'll often make choices that we don't agree with. Um, but I think that we have to understand that that's a natural part of relationships is that there's going to be a time when you have to grace your spouse and you have to show them forgiveness. When you say that, I'm hearing that there is an actual healing power mm -hmm. in the act of letting something go. And I think that most of us grew up in cultures where to let something go was to really solidify that you got punked. Right. You so, know what I'm saying? That, that like, like, you know, I'm not letting this go because I need you to know how bad you hurt me and you need to be able to act accordingly. So we never get to the place of healing because we don't know how to let offenses go. Right. And that's that old adage, you know, I, I forgive you, but I ain't going to forget. Um, that's where that whole get back spirit. If you do something to me, I'm going to get you back for it. But like I said before, forgiveness is about you. When you hold on to something, let me, I'll put it this way. If you do something to me and you hurt my feelings in 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to go on. You're not still thinking about whatever that issue is. 
I'm rehearsing it over and over in my mind. I'm carrying the weight of that. I'm have anxiety cut from it. I'm carrying the weight of this thing. And you've gone on with your life. You've gone on in a different direction. And so we actually harm ourselves emotionally, physically, um, when we don't forgive. And so, like we said, the first point is the healing power of forgiveness. When you forgive, it's about you being able to release whatever that thing is, release um, the toxic toxicity that comes with holding on to unforgiveness because unforgiveness can harbor, um, it can cause health problems. It can cause stress on your body. It can cause emotional problems. Um, and even spiritually, you know, there are scriptures that talk about when you don't forgive that your prayers don't get answered. If you're holding something against somebody else, your prayers get blocked from getting Ooh. all the way to God. Yeah, no, and I think the word is toxicity, not toxicity, but um, we're gonna go back and fact check that <laughs> because I don't need y'all coming for my wife in the comments, I, I caught it. But here's, okay. here's the point for all my uh, grammar <laughs> people. Tr you said something about when scripture talks about the idea of when you release something, it allows for something else to happen. I want y'all to think of forgiveness like a gate. Mm. Um, if the gate is closed, meaning you're walking in unforgiveness with your spouse, what happens is whatever is inside that gate stays in that gate. If you think of it like a dam, if you will, the water inside the gate or inside the dam isn't free flowing. And so there's no life there, right? It is a situation where quite frankly, it can become a real legitimate cesspool. And I think that that's what happens in relationships. We don't realize, and and, and this is another one I wanna, and, and, and I know we've got a couple other points, but when people say time heals all wounds, I think forgiveness heals all wounds. Right, I agree. I, I think that, uh, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's it's the cookout that you come to 10 years later and you've not let your uncle off the hook for the thing he said right. sideways about your boo, who you now married to. And now, <laughs> you, you hear what, right. I, you hear what I'm saying? Right, and that actually goes to when we don't forgive, when we hold on to things, bitterness grows, resentment builds. And so although you may not be talking about it, there's this thing that's building up inside of you that you never let this person off the hook. So you might go, you might say, okay, I'm gonna separate from this person. I'm not gonna deal with this person because they did whatever to hurt me or we're not gonna talk about this situation. It's still there. The elephant hasn't left the room. The elephant is still there, but you're holding on to the elephant. They done gone on, they're doing everything else. And it's actually funny in marriage, what I've learned in this, I don't know factually if this is all men, but my experience has been that typically, well, it depends on the temperament. Depend Certain people with certain temperaments, Glenn is a high D, a lion. Um, he's <laughs> that and a flamingo, which is a high I, what are you, a D, I, what are, D and an I. Yeah, a like, D and I. Not, not diversity, inclusion. <laughs> <laughs> if you know about the disc assessment, you know he's, a disc assessment he's a D and I, I'm a high D and a high which I. we call a lion and a flamingo, but he has the type of temperament that once something is over, so say he does something and he's hurt my feelings, we'll have a conversation about it and we've had the conversation, he'll say he's sorry, he moves on. When I say he moves on, He's moved on. That thing doesn't exist anymore. But if I hold on to it, if I decide I'm not going to let that go, yeah, I said I was sorry, but I mean, I ain't really sorry because you ain't, you know, you ain't did nothing to show me you didn't do, but I don't let it go. And I'm still harboring that thing. So every time he does something similar to that, it's triggering something because I never really let it go. So one of the things that I want to talk to you about, guys, and, and this is point number two today. I want to move right into that forgiveness is an actual foundation for growth. One of the things that I noticed about Sheree over our 25 years of being together is that her personal growth has been incredibly evident. Her practicing the ability to let something because temperamentally Sheree holds on to things. She's an introvert. And many of you guys who are introverts, you understand this. Um, this is why I always tell people that when you see the news and you've watched a person, quote, go postal, most often if you did a personality assessment, you're going to find out that they're highly introverted <laughs> because they... <laughs> 
they, they don't they don't tend to let you know where they they're holding at. on to that they one time their boss that. you took listen, my lunch out the lunchroom listen, and i've been and holding on that my, for the last five years listen, and, and i can't the, take it can, no I, more I, look, I done took all i can take and i can't take no more and and then really, that's and, unforgiveness that, and, and and we're making a little bit light of of the situation but y'all that's toxic yes and, and and so when you let that go you begin to i think sort of construct the building blocks for you to be able to foundationally grow personally and i've watched you grow exponentially in your personal development just around the idea of walking in forgiveness right and it also allows room for growth for the relationship so there was a season in our marriage where there were some things that you were making some decisions that i didn't necessarily agree with and i was holding on to that and i was harboring that it wasn't until i was able truly able to forgive you and let that go that we were able to our relationship was able to go to another level our relationship had grown stagnant and the truth of the matter and this i'm gonna go back to the first one real quick as far as the healing power of forgiveness when you don't forgive particularly your spouse when you're holding on to something and you're harboring that thing it's going to stunt your relationship but it also like i said there there's a, a root of bitterness that will grow but that also will lead to a loss of respect for your spouse because you're harboring this thing you're going to start being snippy with them you're going to start it's going to start coming out in little ways and you're going to notice that it is affecting your relationship and so your relationship then becomes stagnant your relationship doesn't grow yeah no it does and i think that when we're talking about personal growth one of the things that i watch couples do on a regular basis is they outpace or they outgrow one another Mm -hmm. So when you have a, a spouse who is doing their work, right, doing their personal development, growth work, and, and this is more than an intellectual thing. It's a physical thing that you do. You are reading books. You are going to courses. You, you have a coach. Uh, maybe you're in counseling. There's a myriad of things that you're doing that's working your way through something. It causes you to be able to be open to the next level. And I think that foundationally, that's the part of forgiveness. And, and we've... Y'all listen, and, and if you haven't figured out by now, we are relationship coaches. Sheree and I have been doing this for quite some time. This is our full-time job. <laughs> this ain't a side hustle for us. We've written nine books between the two of each other. And for, for all, all these years, I can't tell you how many people, the issues that they have today is a direct result of something that they didn't let go yesterday. Right. And I think that one thing we have to look at when it comes to forgiving my, your spouse for something that they've done. Um, it helps create a safe environment because I, I've always adopted the attitude that everything that happens to me in life, every situation is a, it's an opportunity for me to learn. And so even in my marriage and our marriage, I've looked at when we've had those moments, when things have happened, um, rather than me harboring bitterness, I look at, okay, so what is it that I can learn from this situation? What can we learn from this situation so that we cannot repeat the same mistakes so that we can grow, <laughs> so that we can grow in our relationship and take it to the next level and not repeat the same things. But if I'm going to just hold on to this thing and I'm not going to let it go, there's, there's no opportunity for us to grow beyond whatever happened so that it doesn't um, happen again or anything similar. And so when you decide you're going to tackle whatever the thing is, whatever it is, you know, whether I'm the offender or Glenn's the offender, we look at it as, okay, so this is a mistake that was made. This was a, 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 a bad decision, whatever it was, what can we learn from this individually so that we can be a, become a better person? What can we learn collectively as a, as a partnership? in our marriage so that our relationship can be stronger so that we can grow from that and so that we can improve upon this marriage yeah, thing that we have uh, no, and take it to the next level absolutely and what that develops for me and i've seen it in our relationship and the relationship of others that commit to this work is it increases a such a deeper level of intimacy mm -hmm. So now this is where you are with a person who gets you. Sheree, I, I, you know, we see it on social media all the time where people have a problem because their spouse or their significant other doesn't quote, get them. They don't understand me. And, and the problem is, is that the longer you stay together, the more you're going to evolve as a human being and the more changes you're gonna go through. Well, if you don't practice this kind of level 
of you know forgiveness and the, and the work and all the things that go around it, you're gonna find yourself out distancing each other or outgrowing each other or like you said, growing stagnant. Right. Uh, for those of you guys who need help on any level, maybe you need to take a disc assessment. Maybe you need one of our books. Maybe you need to jump in one of our coaching programs. Maybe you need an online course. We offer all those kinds of things that can help you. Te check out the description um, or the links in the description below and uh, that'll help you out. Babe, I wanna get on to the next one because I really wanna give people some practical steps here and we, now. We, we talking about practice. We talking about practice. We talking about practice. We not talking about the game. <laughs> we talking about practice. We not talking about the game, we talking about practice. I supposed to be the franchise player and we in here talking about practice. Well, Coach I mean, it, listen, we talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. So some of you guys are listening like, okay, this all sounds fine and well. This sounds great. Woo woo, y'all did that, whatever. How do, how do I do that? How do I get past this thing that my spouse has done? They hurt my feelings. They, 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 they violated my trust, whatever, whatever it is. How do we move beyond that? Um, the first step in forgiveness is being able to display empathy. And what I mean by that is realizing that None of us are perfect and we all make mistakes. And if I can look at my spouse as number one, my spouse is not my enemy. Whatever they did, whatever happened, they did not do that intentionally to harm me. That wasn't their intent. And I pray that that's the case in your situation. If it's not, that's a whole nother conversation we need to have. But in most cases, your spouse, when they do something that is hurtful to you or they do something, um, you know, that they violated that trust or whatever that needs forgiving, it was not intentional. Most spouses do not wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to screw up my spouse's day to day. I'm going to hurt them intentionally. And so having empathy and being able to extend grace and say, okay, they made a mistake. They made a poor decision. They missed up. They missed the mark. <laughs> and I'm willing to give them some grace because I make mistakes too. I make poor choices too, because none of us are perfect. Absolutely. We all make mistakes. I know you like to thank you. Don't stay, but lean a little bit closer. See, roses really smell like boo boo boo. Being able to extend that empathy is the first step in um, being able to forgive your spouse. Yeah, the next step, and I want you guys to probably, if you're at a place where you can write this stuff down, this might help you go back and listen to this, is really, you know, that practice and empathy piece is was a work in of itself for me. I did not come into our relationship practicing empathy in any area of my life. I, I led a life that was all about me. Um, I moved extremely selfishly, and that was something I had to learn to do. And it took counseling for me to really tap into figuring out, you know, sitting with a therapist, uh, but maintaining open lines of communication. I think that all too often, Cherie, we practice closing communication. And here's how it looks in relationship. If you say something to me on the way to the movies or out to dinner on a date night that irritates me, it could cause me to shut down, turn the car around and go back home and just say, forget about it. Because I have now effectively shut down the entire lines of communication to talk through, work through. That's a practice. That's a. I mean, it, listen, we're talking about practice. Because the emotion says, I'm pissed off with you. I don't like what you said. You hurt my feelings. You're not owning up up to your responsibility, da, da, da. And then if you're not careful, it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier. Now you start connecting dots to things and you get historical before you get hysterical and the, the, the night is over. Right. So those open lines of communications are critical. And one of the ways that I do that is I, I practice speaking truth to myself. I practice in the moment speaking truth to myself. Here's what I know about Cherie. Cherie's not out to harm me. Her goal is not to just piss me off. Her goal is not to just mess my day up and get me going. And so what I do, speaking truth to myself, saying sometimes out loud, my wife is my helper. She is simply trying to add value to me. She is not here to harm me or to hurt me. Now, this may be a tape that's running in my mind in the moment, 
And, and I've learned how to do that. And I think that when I've practiced that, what it does is it causes me to keep those lines of communication open. And it's funny that you say you use the term the tape running in your mind, because what happens in most cases when someone does something to irritate us, to bother us, we have this <laughs> tape that's running in our mind telling them all the reasons why they did it. We go to, there's this, this, this negative self-talk that comes in that they don't respect me. They don't never listen to what I got to say. They always do this. They don't never, all this starts playing in your head first. But if you can squelch that by telling yourself the truth, okay, what they just said was a little off, but I know they, they didn't mean it that way. Yes, it, it stung the way they said it. It stung what they did. But I, 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 I'm feeling what I'm feeling. Let me acknowledge what I'm feeling, but I have to tell myself the truth. I know they, they did not intentionally do this to hurt me. Sheree, you know what? When you say that, it makes me think of when, you pra when those kinds of habits that you just got finished saying and we talked about becomes habit what it does is, is it builds in space for you to be able to say things like you know what i know this is something that's really irritating to you and clearly we're not getting anywhere let's table this and let's 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 set a time and a date to sit down and let's unpack this and let's talk about this and i just think that unfortunately what a lot of people don't do is they really don't create moments if you will that allows you to just literally move things to a place where you can talk about them in detail and come out with some solution as opposed to a bunch of emotion right and so one thing that i do and the ladies in my in our community know that i use this phrase often I will tell myself whenever Glenn does something that irritates me or that bothers me, number one, I remind myself, okay, whatever he's dealing with, it ain't got nothing to do with me. He's going through something, whatever, because what I did or what I said should not have called. I didn't do anything that warranted the production of the response that he may have given me. So I know I'm not to blame for whatever all this is. This is his issue. This is whatever he's going through. And I remind myself that he's special. And what I mean by special, and I'm special too. We're all special. We all have our special moments. We all have our, our off days. We all have our off moments. But that's my way of mentally making light of it to the Help degree me. that I don't allow those feelings, those emotions to overwhelm me to the point that now I'm now we're about to go blow to blow because I'm going to go back and forth with you. I recognize, okay, so whatever just happened, just happened. Okay, so obviously there's something else going on here. I don't know if you're in a place that you really want to talk about whatever's going on, but let's, when you get yourself together, yep, yep. let's talk about it. And, and I don't internalize it. And I think that's one of the biggest things when our spouse does something that irritates us or that bothers us, we automatically take on whatever that is. And I'm like, so, and I'm going to go way left on this. Say my spouse commits adultery on me. It ain't my fault. I ain't had nothing to do with that. That's something going on with you. That's something you need to deal with. But what society has taught us, particularly as women, well, you must have not, you know, I mean, what did you do to cause him to leap? I ain't do nothing. I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's your issue and you need to deal with it. And you're going to have to work to repair the violation of the trust in a relationship, but I'm not going to take ownership of what you did. That's so good. That's so good. No, that's so good, babe, because what it does is it keeps a, and, and again, we've been talking about this. It keeps those floodgates open. Now water can pass and flow. Mm -hmm. And that's why you, you and I have come to a conclusion again in full, dis, full transparency Sheree and I both have been married before. I was married for 12 years where it was rife full of adulterous affairs on my part, okay? And, and, and too many to number. It was horrible. Sheree has gone through the same thing as the offender in her previous two marriages. Mm -hmm. Here's the point I'm making. If you don't at some point open up those gates to allow things to come and ebb and flow and grow from that, you stay the same person. Right. So we can say that we've been faithful to each other over the last 25 years, not because we can't go out and, and cut up, 
and, and, and do those things. But it's because we've grown past that and we're able to talk about in real time, this is what's going on with me because I would dare say, I don't care what any problem arises in your relationship. Here's what I can tell you. The minute you shut down is the minute you begin to, to cement the fact that it will not get resolved. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that too many of us quit on relationships that are, are worth something. Right now, I'm not saying that there are not times where you shouldn't quit, and that's a whole nother conversation. But in these practical steps to cultivate to cultivate forgiveness, I want you to go back and listen to this and ask yourself which one are you able to apply? Put it in the chat for us. Which one resonates with you? Which one didn't we not mention that you said, you know what? And and, and another thing, <laughs> put, right. put it in the chat because we want these uh, talks that we do to be a dialogue, to be an opportunity for you guys to go back and really get something out of it. But this is this is good. The, the, the role of forgiveness, understanding that it actually plays a role yes. in our relationship. Yes, you have to have an understanding of forgiveness. You have to be willing to forgive. You have to be willing to be humble. You have to be willing to extend grace in order to have a successful relationship because you are going to have to forgive your spouse for something at some point in time over the course of your marriage. And it's probably going to be multiple times. If you want to have a successful relationship, you can't walk around harboring things. You can't walk around with this list of things you're going to throw out every time something happens. But remember when you did this, that's a horrible way to live in a relationship because now you're just one offing each other. We've been able to, for the past 25 years, overcome many challenges and been able to be successful in overcoming those challenges because we're committed to doing the work. I want y'all to write this down somewhere. I have to kill Petty Eddie. Mm. And I have to kill Petty Betty. Say it with me. I, I have, have to, to kill, kill Petty Eddie. Eddie and I have to, to kill, kill Petty, Petty Betty. Betty. That's a work that you do on you. I can't kill the Petty Betty in her. No. She can't kill the Petty Eddie in me. Right. But I can absolutely put Petty Eddie on the altar, sacrifice that joint, and say, listen, here's what I know that don't work. That tit for tat, that going back and forth, you know, that, that trade-off life, that, that's, not, that's, not, that's not it. At the end of the day, here's what I can promise you. You cannot get to any place of significance by yourself, guys. And the reason why that is, Sheree, is because we you all, all need some, some help. Help. <laughs> I need somebody. Help. help. Help me. Not just anybody. <laughs> help. help. Help me. If you guys want to learn more about the different programs that we offer, please check out the link in the description below. Also, please subscribe to the channel and we hope to see you next week. Y'all be good. We'll talk to you soon.